Uh, oh. No, no, it still won't let me. Oh, yes, here we go. You're live, it says. Good evening, everyone. So first of all, before I introduce Neil, can somebody tell me whether they can hear me? And that's always the weird one because I know there's a delay between what I've said and you being able to tell me that you can hear me. Can somebody say, yes, I can hear you? Of course, if you can't hear me, you can't say yes. <laughs> Evening, Lacey. Can you hear us, Lacey? Can you hear us, Perfume Addict? Yes, brilliant. OK, you can hear us. OK. Right. Um, we'll just wait a minute or two for a few more people to join us um, and then I will introduce you to Neil. Sorry, that's me talking to myself because I've just... Loud and clear. Excellent. Excellent. Hello. Hello, Africa every day. Hello, Heidi. Hello, Deb. Hello, Virginia. Hello, N Nigel. Hello, Perfume Addict. Cynthia, Richard, Lacey, Tracy, Samantha. Um, and apologies to anyone that I've missed out. Um, OK, right. Well, let's introduce Neil. So if I get rid of that, you should see Neil behind it and uh, Neil has come to tell us about real life on an oil rig or oil platform and he's going to tell us the difference between the two. Um, oh dear, right, I've got a, an error here that says YouTube is not receiving enough video to maintain smooth streaming. But I think it's working all right. I hope it's working all right. Um, Yes. Um, so, N hello, Neil. Hi. Uh, hi. Uh, first of all, uh, I'll get Neil to say a few things and tell me whether you can hear him because I was having trouble hearing him earlier on. So, um, can you, I don't know, recite the alphabet backwards or something, Neil, so that we can, <laughs> we can they can see whether they can hear you. Okay, is that coming through clearly? C can you hear Neil, everybody? Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's working fine. Awesome. Excellent. Okay. Well, thank you very much for joining us, Neil. Um, so Neil is going to tell us in a minute about his experience of working on an oil rig and an oil platform. And um, then he's going to answer lots of questions that I've got over there on the screen. Um, so first of all, Neil, tell us about your experience of working in the oil industry. Well, uh... I graduated um, from Robert Gordon's Institute of Technology in Aberdeen with a degree in mechanical engineering in 1983 and the year after I uh, got a job with Shell uh, in Aberdeen uh, as a graduate trainee mechanical engineer, obviously working within the oil industry and spent five or six years there, learned the basics and uh, through Shell, I got a quite a good grounding on how things actually operate, both onshore and offshore. So, uh, basically, I, I do know the difference between a platform and a rig, <laughs> and um, know that some of the interesting um, ideas that have been put forward by some of the scammers are just that, very interesting. Um, all rubbish, most of them, to be honest, but... Uh, you know, so yes, I can. I'm, I'm basically answering anything you'd like to know about the North Sea oil industry. Yeah. So perhaps you could tell us what is the difference between an oil rig and an oil platform? For the general public, most people will call them rigs. That, that's, that's the generic term they give them. But uh, to somebody in the oil and gas industry, a platform is a fixed installation. It'll be moved out into the North Sea 
once oil's been discovered, if it's a large enough oil reserve, and it'll be producing oil for 20, 30, maybe 40 years. Uh, a rig, on the other hand, is a mobile installation. It can either be towed out to the drilling site, it can make its way under its own steam, and uh, once it gets there, it'll drill for the oil, and once it finds it, it'll cap the well and move off as quickly as possible. Obviously, time's money, they don't hang around. Um, as soon as an oil reserve has been drilled, drilled for and found, um, it doesn't take long for the platform to arrive at all. You know, they'll, it can be built within well, 18 months to two years. Um, so basically, that's the main difference. Uh, rigs move from site to site, platform don't. So a platform would be purpose built for one site and one site only? That's it, yes. Okay. So it'll be a fixed permanent installation. Yeah. And how many people would work on a typical on a typical platform? On a typical platform, you'd be around about two hundred. Right. Somebody's just asked. Virginia's just asked. Can I ask where in the world they have land-based platforms? Well, they have land-based uh, drilling rigs. Um, they don't really have platforms as such. Um, their own short reserve. They have, there are some in Texas and various other places in, within the continental US. <clears throat> there are gas rigs, uh, gas sites in um, Libya and um, Tunisia, places like that in North Africa. Um, again, it's a lot cheaper to set up an installation on a, onshore, obviously, than it is offshore because. Uh, you know, they'll just they'll need they'll have the drilling the traditional drilling tower, but uh, they won't need to change it over for a purpose-built platform as such, because as it's on shore based, they'll just put a, a wellhead on it and they'll come and take the gas or oil whenever they need it, basically. Yeah. Uh, Virginia's followed that up by saying one of your scammers worked on a platform in the middle of France. Well, I think he worked in Rands, didn't he? Which he seemed to think was surrounded <laughs> by the sea. <laughs> I think he thought he was in the Pacific Ocean, didn't he? <laughs> That's right, yes. It never ceases to amaze me how geographically challenged some of them are. You'd think they'd look at Google Maps first, wouldn't you? <laughs> some research, yes. <laughs> so, so the next thing to ask you, of course, is that the scammers will always tell you they've been on the rig for four or five years without a vacation. Uh, how long do you actually spend on a rig? Uh, they, they're typical work schedule is two weeks on and two weeks off. Sometimes uh, workers will stay there for maybe four weeks to six weeks if there's an urgent job on. But certainly no more than that. You would not be stuck out there for months at a time on your own, you know. They're, they're, they're very, very stringent on the leave breaks, you know, because obviously you don't want you burning out or becoming careless or having a lapse in concentration is going to cause an accident, so they're really stringent with the leave periods. Yeah, because they work quite long days when they're on the platform or the rig, don't they? They do, yes. It's a minimum of a 12-hour day, sometimes 18, again, depending on what's on. Yeah, so it's basically you come for two weeks, you work an intense two-week period, and then you go away and, and rest for two weeks. That's, that's it. Basically, for two weeks when you're on the platform, you're working, eating and sleeping. That's it. And then you're home. Yeah. Somebody says, I had one told me he was on a rig in Manchester. <laughs> Only Manchester. I've had them tell me that they live in Manchester United. <laughs> All right, yes. <laughs> and tell us about life actually on an oil rig, because one scammer, I think, didn't he, told me that he'd got his two young sons with him. Yeah, well, that, that, that's nonsense. Nobody <laughs> under 18 is allowed on an oil rig for a start, uh, obviously because of the uh, liability insurance of the company in question, but um, generally, the, like I said, they'll, they'll work 12 hours, uh, depending on what they're doing. If they're on the production side of things, they'll be in the production module, basically adjusting uh, valves, checking gauges, checking the pressures are all right down in the well. Uh, and round about the production, there will be 
maintenance technicians basically working permanently around them. There's always something that needs repaired or maintained. A lot of valves, a lot of gas and oil, low control equipment that needs to be monitored. So it's never, it's never still. There's always somebody doing something. Um, as I said, when they're not working, they'll be eating and then sleeping. That's all we can really think about. Yeah. They haven't got time to go onto Facebook and look for their uh, queen or <laughs> their next big love or whatever it is they're looking for, you know, so... But if they uh, felt inclined to do that, presumably they are allowed to use Facebook. Well, yeah, there's no restrictions <laughs> on the communications. And I notice that some of them say that they're not allowed to take videos because it's against company rules. Well, that's nonsense. Yeah. Um, I mentioned to you earlier that uh, one of my grandsons was doing a project from the North Sea oil industry. And when I was on a platform, I took the camera around everywhere to let me see what was going on. So, yeah, you can do whatever you want, basically, within reason. As long as you're not interfering with uh, the work or your or causing a potentially dangerous situation, it's fine. Yeah. Um, somebody says, oh, Heidi, do workers have a cafeteria on the platform? One scammer told me he was starving. Yes, and one told me that he had to fish for his own supper, didn't he? I had a picture of him with his little fishing line off the top of his little rig. <laughs> well, they have excellent, excellent facilities, restaurant quality food. Um, whatever you want, basically, you can have. And you, you would never, ever pay for your food on a platform. Yeah. Ever. I've got it one on the happen. go at the moment who's told me that he's on the rig with ten with his ten workers and he's hired a cook to cook for them. Again, that's just absolute <laughs> nonsense. There, there are a team of chefs and kitchen assistants working round the clock in two shifts. Yeah. You know, to see, see everybody's well fed. And they all. How much is the helicopter flight back to Aberdeen? Says Nigel. <laughs> Yes, that would be that would cost a fortune. Yeah, it costs about thirty thousand pounds to keep one in the air for an hour. Twenty to thirty thousand. Last time I looked. So, uh, but then again, nobody ever pays for their helicopter flights to and from a platform. None of the workers would ever have to do that. Yeah. Um, what other questions have we got? Um... Uh, oh, yes, yeah, so, well, one thing that somebody said, do they get good phone signals? One thing that some um, several people have said to me is they're not allowed to use their phones or make video calls because um, they're in a highly flammable environment. Has any oil rig ever exploded because somebody's used a mobile phone? Sure, in the short, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Didn't think it had, but, you know... Um, uh, what else do they tell us? Oh, did, we had one a few weeks ago, didn't we, who said that he was collected by a plane every day to take him to the other end of the oil rig so that he could go to, <laughs> go back to his cabin. <laughs> well, that would, do, that would be one... That would be a massive installation. Yeah, <laughs> certainly the platforms I've seen wouldn't be capable of carrying any sort of fixed-wing aircraft. No. <laughs> My half-sister works as a cook in a camp. The workers called them platforms. Um, yeah. Now, a question just popped into my head, flitted, out, flitted across it and went out the other side. It's very sad having a brain like a sieve. I've always had it. When, when I go senile, nobody's going to notice because I, I, will have, I was born senile, which is very sad. Um, <laughs> oh, I know what I was going to say. Um, do I know what I was going to say? No, I don't. <laughs> It'll come back to me. It'll come back to me. Um, yeah, I know. Uh, what questions? If somebody is talking to someone online who claims that they work on an oil rig, there's a very high chance they're talking to a scammer, obviously. But what questions should they be asking? Ask them what he does on the platform. Um, I know. I notice that a lot of them seem to come up with generic answer. The generic answer of being a contractor. But you know, what actually are you contracted to do? Are you on maintenance? Are you in the production department? I mean, are you the offshore installation manager? I mean, what are you out there doing? If you can't answer that, 
And if somebody did get a contract to work on an oil rig, how long would a typical contract be? Well, it depends. Um, I, I keep myself as an example. I've worked on a contract basis for the past few years now. All that means is that uh, you're the lowest of the low when it comes to dealing with the companies, because you're not there, you're not staff, you're disposable sort of thing. They'll use you and then get rid of you, that sort of thing. You can make up, make more money doing that, but obviously you don't have the same benefits as somebody who was employed by the company we have. I mean, they, they have excellent insurance, uh, medical insurance, sorry. They, they'll have their paid holidays and everything, um, pension schemes, car, useless allowance, whatever. But, um, yeah, that, that's about it. Uh, and all the, scam yeah. all the scammers seem to think that being a contractor means being the boss. But you've kind That's of it, just said yeah. the opposite, that you're the lowest of the low. That's it. Yeah. Being a contractor means absolutely nothing. Yeah. Uh, oh, yes. Don't forget to ask about charging the wife for leave. Um, hello, Greg. Um, <laughs> yeah. That seems to be a common theme, doesn't it, with the army scammers and the rig scammers, that um, their wife, they can only get leave if their wife asks for it. I'm sure there's a few wives who would willingly pay to cover their husband's debt there for an extra two weeks, but uh, <laughs> yes. I've never heard of that. No. Uh, uh, is, is, there any work, is any work secret on an oil rig? No. I wouldn't it's, think it's so. No, they, they couldn't afford to have anything secret. Everybody needs to know what everybody's doing, obviously, for a, from a safety perspective. Yeah. If you have somebody working working in an area that nobody knows they're working in and somebody goes to turn on a valve and the valve's been maintained, bang, you know. So that would never happen. Yeah. No, everybody knows what everybody's doing. Uh, and the same, I would assume, with the location of rig. I've had a few saying, oh, they're not allowed to tell me where their rig is. Well, they're not exactly small. If you fly over them in a, you know, in an aeroplane or you sail past on a ship, you're probably going to spot them, aren't you? Again, that's nonsense. All platforms in the North Sea are assigned to a block, and on each platform is, is uh, written the, oh, the name of the platform, usually a very big sign, is in the letters and numbers of the block that they're working in. And those blocks are determined years before the platform is even set out there. So it's known in advance for years. I mean, right, and obviously it has to be known right down to the nearest meter because, you know, the position in those platforms highly accurately, well, like GPS nowadays. But no, that, that, their site is known to everybody. Anybody who wants to find out can find out. Yeah. And as you've just said, every oil rig or pl every oil platform, and I guess the rigs as well, has a name, don't they? Yes. Yeah. Because I asked one yesterday what was the name of his rig, and he told me Ex Exxon Mobil. Right. Which okay. is the name of the company, well, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> and you'll notice uh, on some of my videos where they've sent me photographs of um, the entire rig from the air or someone something coming onto land, I do try and stop it and pick out the name of the rig or the platform. So if this happens to you, and then... Uh, oh, yes, we're onto that, Heidi. Um, and then Google the name of the platform. And I've had several tell me on, they're on platforms that have long since been decommissioned. Uh, yes, Heidi says, a scammer once said that it was his responsibility to pay any machine part that broke down. Again, that's just blatant nonsense. No worker would ever be expected, even though he is a contractor, would never be expected to pay for a part. Yeah. That just doesn't happen. And in fact, that's one of the stories they tell, isn't it? That they need to spend, I don't know, pick a number, $30,000. And they've all, all the mates on the platform have managed to get $28,000 and he's $2,000 short. Oh, and of course, he can't access his bank account while he's on the oil rig. Well, if he can speak to somebody on Facebook, I'm sure he could access his bank account. But, uh, you know, but no, that would never happen. Um, nobody's ever individually liable for a part that fails or is damaged. You know, obviously the companies still have parts ad infinitum in stock. You know, just waiting for such an eventuality as that. Yeah. So that's always covered. 
by the company. How do they get the crude oil from the platform to land? Two pipelines, two pipelines. Um, they'll also bring in boating production service vessels, which will actually pump the oil, pumped into them like oil tankers. They usually are converted oil tankers, but they're capable of hooking up to the wellhead themselves and pumping the oil up into their storage tanks. Oh, and right. they'll take it to whichever refinery they're going to. Yeah. Usually someone go and Shetland for the North Sea. Yeah. Because I had one um, a while ago, didn't I, um, who told me that, <laughs> that they put the oil in barrels and then he had to line them up to count the barrels before they went on the ship. Or something yeah, like that. <laughs> that would take a while. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And then can you imagine getting at the other end and unloading all the barrels and then siphoning all the oil out? <laughs> yeah, that'd be non stop, that, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I don't know where they got that from. Maybe they saw the term a barrel of oil and thought, ah, took it literally. Oh, he did. Oh, yes. Because um, regrettably, as we were saying before we went live, the um, the scammers tend not to be the sharpest tools in the shed. Let's put it that way. No, they don't. Um, not, uh, uh, oh, that's perfume addict saying she baits for fun. Has anybody got any questions that they would like to ask Neil? You're getting a bit dark, Neil. You're sort of... Oh, yeah, it is a bit, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to... Should we do something about that? Oh, yes, that's that's a good one, Perfume Addict. I've been, uh, I've been shown photos of... The... Ah. Oh, that's better. Yeah. Right, yes. Um, Perfume Addict says, Do they dive to the pipes? They say they do. I've certainly had several that have said that. Well, actually, you, you will occasionally have divers operating on a wellhead from a platform for routine maintenance, but they certainly don't dive to assemble the drill pipe and start drilling on the seabed. Oh, so yes. The divers do operate. I did have one, didn't I, that told me that he had to connect up the pipes, dive and connect up yeah, the pipes yeah. every day. Yeah. And what was he sitting on? I can't remember. He told me he was uh, he was sitting on something that was completely not what he said. Do they have satellite internet, Dennis? Denise? Um, I, don't know. I can't work out what your name is, Dennis or Denise. Do they have satellite internet? Yeah, they have satellite communications, yes. Yeah. A few fries short of a happy meal. Yeah, I suppose that's... What's the typical barrels <laughs> per day, says Nigel? In, on a large platform, you could be producing a couple of million a day, yeah. easily. That's, a, that's um, at full capability. Very rarely they are at full capability because, you know, they like to artificially hike or lower the oil price, so, you know, they'll... <laughs> I'm sure the oil companies are making a fortune. I doubt, doubt the oil companies are making a fortune at the moment. I didn't say that, obviously. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well they're, they're always, they'll always get their money from somewhere. Yeah. Uh, Virginia says, how long does an oil platform last before it moves to another site? Uh, well, the platforms don't actually move. They're fixed. Uh, if you mean a rig, uh, a drilling rig, it'll typically... It'll, be there for maybe up to two weeks at the most. But as soon as it strikes oil and uh, lays down the wellhead, caps it, you'll move on. But platforms don't move. They're, they're over that site for life, for their life. Yeah. Typically, they can last for up to 40 years, and then they'll generally be decommissioned. Right. OK. Um, somebody says... Um, how can you find out where the rigs are? Are most in the North Sea? Well, no, actually, no, not most of them, but uh, it's very easy. If you put in the, um, there is a site you can go to, and I'm afraid I've forgotten what it is, but if you put in the name of a rig, 
for a platform. It'll tell you exactly where it is at that precise moment. Oh, so like People, a ship, like the ship finding websites. Yes, very similar. Yeah. Maybe it's something as simple as platform finder. Um, but presumably they have satellite, they have tracking devices on them. Oh yes. Yeah. yeah they're, they're well, they're well tracked. Yes. Yeah. Um. Somebody says you can hardly hear ne Neil. Um, yes, he is very quiet. If he gets closer to his microphone, you can hear him a bit better. There you are, so you can see him full face better? now. Sorry, say that again. Is that better? I would say it is. But the problem is then is I can hear myself. But I dare say. Um, that's a lot of oil. Um, Perhaps you could tell us the difference, because I don't think this is something that most of the scammers get, the difference between crude oil and um, what we would call petrol in the UK, but I guess our American friends would call gasoline. Well, basically all the oil that comes is brought up by a platform is crude oil. It doesn't get anything else. The, the, the separation into its lower fractals, such as kerosene or gasoline, is done at the, um, at the oil refinery. That's simply it. All the platform will bring up is crude. Yeah, because I had one person, didn't I, who told me he was on a ship with a refinery on board, but he was also oh, drilling right. as they moved. So I, I visualised this sort of hole wor worming its way across the seabed as his ship moved while he was simultaneously refining it. That would be an interesting approach to oil production, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Don't know whether the oil would come out into the sea or the sea would fill the well. Presume, do they backfill the wells with seawater? The, when, the, when, the, when the well's first been discovered, and what, they, what they'll do is they'll put a, a casing pipe in it and then they'll fill it with what they call cement and mud. Not not seawater so much because the, the 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 mud and the cement has to be of a sufficient weight and pressure to contain the oil. Seawater just wouldn't quite cut it. Right. Because presumably they're creating as they re extract the oil, they're creating a vast void under the Earth's surface. Well, the thing is, uh, you know, when when you look at the if you've seen the typical views of a cutaway view of a platform and the wellhead, you see the wellhead sitting nicely on the sea bottom. Well, the, the, the reserves, they could be 12,000 feet below that. Yeah. So uh, the, the chances of the, the well collapsing are very minimal. Because, you know, there are such great distances between right. the wellhead and the actual reserves that... Uh, it's, I've never heard of it happening, to be honest. Right. Um, Perfume Addict says, are most in the North Sea? Or the Gulf of no, Mexico, I'll add. <laughs> I, I don't know if most are. The, certainly there are a lot of platforms in the North Sea, but uh, they're also off the coast of West Africa, in the Hibernia field, off the uh, east coast of, New, of Newfoundland. And, and, and in the Gulf of Mexico, I believe that there are a lot in the Gulf of Mexico. Because the Gulf of Mexico seems to be, in my experience, the most common place um, that uh, the scammers will tell you that they are. Well, if they've, if they've been researching, well, if they have been doing research, <laughs> no doubt that will come up, yeah. Yeah, well, it would be nice to find one that's done some research. Um, uh, yeah. A perfume addict says again, "Where do you? F how do you find where a rig is?" Um, I, I, we're, we're, I'll have a look when we've finished and see if I can find um, an oil rig locating site because there's certainly there's well, obviously there's the plane finder if you're trying to track a plane, and there's um, what's it called, marine traffic finder or something yeah, if you're yeah, uh, looking for a ship. Um, I wonder if the oil platforms and rigs are on the marine one, um, which would be... Do you have to have a degree to have most jobs on an oil rig, asked Virginia? No, no not at all, no. 
I'm, I presume that depends what kind of job you're after. That's it, yeah. I mean, if you're, a, if you're for example, a geologist working on a platform, you'd have a degree. If you're a maintenance technician, no, I don't think you would. Yeah. And presumably there are cleaners and chefs and cooks oh, yeah. and um, welders and pretty uh, office... Do, do, are there office staff on rigs? They do, they do have communication staff and clerical staff, yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, somebody says, Susan says, is there a platform in Monte Carlo? No. <laughs> I don't think there'd be room for one, would there? <laughs> It'd take up the whole of Monte Carlo. <laughs> it's probably in one of the casinos. <laughs> they really don't have a clue, do they, most of these scammers? Um, oh. Come on, guys, let's have some more questions. Apparently Elvis was in a meeting last night. <laughs> I don't know what kind of meeting, though. <laughs> and why do you think so many scammers claim they're on an oil rig? I suppose it's because they think that uh, it's difficult to check up on them. Um, maybe they think that uh, people won't take the time to research it. You'll just take their word for it. I, I don't know, but um, obviously it seems to work for a lot of them, unfortunately. Yeah. But I think it's because, uh, like, why, because, like, why so many of them claim to be military personnel? Yes. Because, oh, they're in danger and they need this and need that. And um, the more dangerous the situation they're in, the more likely the, the victim is to help them, possibly, you know. Yeah. But because they do tell you that being on an oil platform is, is very risky, they'll often say that, won't they? Yes. Um, oh, yes, Susan says, and I've had them all say this to me, is it freezing on a platform? It can be in the winter, yes. What about in summer? Right, but ge um, it generally, it, it, yes, it's all year round. It can be cold in the North Sea. But once you're inside, there's... They're very, very warm inside. You know, they're kept at a constant temperature, so it's not a problem. Yeah. And what about if you were on the, in the Gulf of Mexico? Have you ever worked there? No, I've never been there, no. Yeah. Because I would guess that even at sea in the Gulf of Mexico, it isn't going to be that cold. It wouldn't be. Yeah. No. It's, I mean, a lot of people would think, oh, the Gulf of Mexico, it must be tropical down there. But, you know, five minutes in the ocean at night, you be suffering from hypothermia like anywhere else really yeah um what have we got here alan says what is the biggest misconception about working on an oil rig uh, well. <laughs> that the pay is good <laughs> well it's certainly not as it, it's not what it used to be uh, at the beginning the salaries were enormous yeah i mean there were really people who make more in a month than they did in a year in some cases, you know. Wow. But now it's, it's not the worst paid jobs, but it's certainly not the best either. Yeah. Um, maybe another misconception is, well, just how dangerous it is. There, ever since the unfortunate incidents like the Piper Alpha disaster, safety's been just caught so tightly. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> um, uh, so it's, re it's really, they're really one of the safer places to work nowadays. Yeah. Uh, Heidi says, where do the workers sleep while on the platform? Well, on, most platforms have their own accommodation modules. Some of the bigger ones will have... Uh, what they call hotels beside them. They're basically floating structures that look like an oil rig, well, usually are converted rigs that have the accommodation modules on them. So, yeah, but nine times out of ten, the accommodation modules are on the platform. Yeah, so everybody would have their own private ca cabin? Most people would. Some people hop, what they call hot bunk, you know, somebody's working while... Uh, Somebody's working, other guys sleeping in the same bed, etc. But that yeah. doesn't happen too often. Right. 
What type of engineers do you have on a rig, as they all say engineers? Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, on a permanent basis, there won't be very many of those who have the strictest designation of the word engineer attached to an oil pot, but they'll have um, production engineers, certainly. But then again, they, they work mainly from onshore. They'll tell people on the platform what to do. They don't need to be there. Engineers generally convey their instructions from onshore to the platform. Um, when you do have to go out, it's generally because of something either major or something that's highly unusual, yeah. something that they couldn't foresee with a piece of equipment. But generally, um, Production, production platforms get, get on quite well without engineers on, without engineers messing <laughs> things up, you know. <laughs> so if you're working actually on the drilling, uh, on the drilling, on drilling, on the drill, you're not necessarily an engineer? No, no. no you're not necessarily a, a qualified engineer at all, no. Right. Um... Is it scary being on a rig at night, or is it like being in a hotel? To be honest, I've never found it frightening to be on a rig at all, no. Yeah. But then I've never been there when it's been a, a gale in the middle of the North Sea in winter, so I don't know, that might be a different prospect. Yes. That, I, I could imagine that would be a bit frightening if you once you step outside. Yes. 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 Yeah. Um, Heidi says, how big is a platform? Right. Well, if you take it from the seabed to the drill floor, it could be maybe three, three <coughs> times the height of the Statue of Liberty, something like that. And on average in the North Sea, anyway. Yeah. And surface area. Surface area. You'll get a good three to four <coughs> hectares, anyway. So quite a big structure. Uh, yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, Not big enough to land a plane on, but big. <laughs> but they all have helipads, so you can get your helicopter on there. Um, yeah, they all have helipads. Oh, there was a couple of... Um, oh, right. Um, Deb says, are there any women on a rig? Yes. Yeah, there's... Uh, in all designations, you know, yeah. It's... Still, maybe seventy-five percent men to twenty-five percent females, but yes, there are women on rigs. Yeah, uh, and somebody else has said, "Do you have to cover the cost of any breakage if there's an accident?" <laughs> no, that will never happen. <laughs> not even if you drop a mug in the canteen. <laughs> well, no. I mean, you might not be invited back in a hurry, but you wouldn't be held responsible for it. Yeah. I mean, I imagine the things that they claim that have broken and they've got to pay for, I would imagine, rather than costing thirty or sixty thousand dollars, cost hundreds of thousands of dollars. Excuse <coughs> me. Yeah, right. The, the, How... the pressure control equipment uh, <laughs> alone um, sitting on the seabed above the wellhead is runs into tens of millions of dollars, you know. Yeah. That, that's the main equipment that you're looking not to fail. Um, unfortunately, that's what happened on the Macondo, but and the Macondo well in the Gulf of Mexico. But um, yeah, you're you're speaking millions of dollars worth of equipment. Something for thirty thousand. I mean, that that's uh, the equivalent of a like a spanner. You know, yeah, yes, a couple of screws. Uh, oh, perhaps I shouldn't say that online. Um, Susan says, are there pubs on the rig and do you drink beer? No, I don't know if she means do you drink beer. Sorry? Uh, alcohol's banned on all um, offshore installations. Right. Worldwide. Uh, Perfume Addict says, how many, how many men work at a time? Um, half are working while well, the other half are seasoned. So yeah, 100 working while well, 100 are otherwise engaged, yeah. Yeah. So, do do they work? Presumably, the rig works twenty four hours. So, if people work twelve hours, there's like two shifts. Yes. Yes. And when you come for your two weeks, would you work the same shift for the whole of the two weeks? 
you try to, yes. Sometimes that's not always possible, but yeah, they try to keep everybody, um, you know, you've got, you do day times, you'll do night times, you'll do day times, you'll do night times, and that's like set in stone, but yeah. unfortunately it can't always be like that, but generally they try to make sure that people get at least some rest, you know. Yeah. And so this this concept that somebody's hired on a contract and he brings his ten men, his ten boys, they always say, his ten boys with him to work, and so he's the supervisor, is just completely made up. That, it doesn't that happen. Doesn't, that doesn't usually happen like that, no. And so you would, um, basically you're employed by the oil company, aren't you? Well, you're in, you're, uh, unless you're a contractor, you, you can be employed by an agency who are right. uh, employed by the yes. oil company, or you can be working on a limited liability basis where you you are directly employed by the oil company, but not as yourself, as a company, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I do, yes, yes, it gets a bit complicated, doesn't it, in the contract world. Yeah. Uh, Susan says, do you have to be good with heights? There's can be instances where uh, it might be helpful. Uh, I mean, for example, in an emergency, if you had to get off the rig in a hurry, no way off was from the heli deck, you'd have to do it. You know, the, and that's maybe two, three hundred feet off the, you know, down to the sea. Yeah. It might not be. So basically, just don't look down. <laughs> Yeah. And in one of, one of the videos somebody sent me recently, there was like a circular structure lift thing that the men were holding on around the outside. What, what would that be? Do you know what I mean? A bosun's chair. That's, that's basically used to lift uh, some workers from one part of the rig to another. But they're, they're not using the North Sea. They're, they're too dangerous. Right. So he wasn't getting off the rig to go onto the ship for the night. No, he wasn't. No, actually, I think that was the same person that later on um, then told me that he got the plane, that the pilot came and picked him up to take him to the other end of the rig. Do they stay on the, a rig for a year or more? Never, no. That'll never happen. No, I think you said the longest possible period would be four to six weeks, didn't you? But usually yeah. two. Um, does... Pre does production continue even during heavy storms? Yes, it does. The, the platforms are rated to withstand an enormous force. I mean, that's all designed into them. So yes, they can, uh, unless it was an extremely unheard of type hurricane that hit, you know, they'll always produce, yeah. yes. How do they fix a platform to the seabed? Um, well, with most fast platforms, there's a a, stru a steel structure that runs from the seabed right up and the platform basically sits on top of that structure. Right. That, that's the most common type. There are other types. Um, the platforms that actually are like, like semi-submersible rigs, but then they're, these pontoons that support them are anchored permanently to the seabed. So that must be quite a... To the seabed, Quite a feat of engineering, just tying all that lot down to start off with. It's quite a, it's quite a feat sighting the platform superstructure st initially. Yes, it, you know, you know, one degree off, and that's it. Really, gosh. Yeah, <laughs> per perfume addicts obviously watched the guy who um, said that he had to fish for his supper. Can you fish off a rig, as one scammer said he was? You'd need a very long fishing line, I would think, wouldn't you? I've never seen it personally, no. <laughs> it's just to stop you, I don't suppose, but I don't think anybody's really that inclined to, you know, risk getting their line fouled up with the countless pipes and tubes that are hanging from below the platform. You know, <laughs> it'll be quite a feat of navigation getting through them. Yeah. yeah. And reeling it in, you know, if it, you're sort of like three times oh, yeah. the height of the, of the um, Statue of Liberty, as you said. <laughs> Yeah, okay, take your while to reel in your fish, wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah. How long are the contracts for? Says perfume addict. Yeah, I think we got we got distracted on that one, didn't we? Yeah, if you can, if you can, you can have a 
you could be working offshore and be given, say, a three-year contract. That doesn't mean you're going to be there for three years solid. That means you'll be employed for, for a total of three years on a two-week on, two-week off basis, for example. Yeah. That's all that means. Yeah. Because um, uh, I've had several, for some strange reason, telling me they're there for five months seems to be the fashionable thing at the moment. Never heard of that. <laughs> No. How far out to sea is a platform, says Susan? On average, maybe 150 to 200 miles east of Aberdeen in the North Sea. Yes, I've, I've tracked some of where they say they are, haven't I, on, on the maps, and they finish up in the middle yes. of sort of Leeds or somewhere, because one of them told me he was something <coughs> like 200 miles east of Belfast, didn't he, or Dublin, which I think roughly put him in the middle of Leeds. <laughs> And they all say they're on the high seas. Have you noticed that? Yes. I think they've been watching too many pirate movies, too much Pirates of the Caribbean. (laughs) Certainly most platforms are sighted in a sea somewhere, but, you know, uh, whether it's high or not, uh, no (laughs) open to interpretation. (laughs) And, uh, yeah. Are there any oil... um, sites in the southern hemisphere sort of australia new zealand south yeah, africa there are big big fields of the um of brazil in the southern hemisphere the yeah southern portion uh, and in australian waters yes <laughs> yeah. they're, they're, they're basically there are oil reserves everywhere there are a lot in the atlantic you just don't have the technology to get down that far yet but all happen. right right interesting Kim says, with a smile, have you ever lost access to your pay and had to rely on iTunes cards to use your cell phone? Uh, not that I can think of offhand, no. <laughs> um, is there a uniform? Oh, that's an interesting one. Well, actually, some of the, um, the chefs and the ancillary stuff have, will have a company uniform, you know, the usual chef's hat and white uh, gowns and things. Yeah. But, you know, and basically most, most oil platform workers will be wearing boiler suits. Yes, it might have their company logo on it, but no, there's no uniform as such. Yeah. Uh, but and presumably all the safety gear and the boiler suits and the correct boots and that are all supplied by the company. Yes, generally they are. Unless you're a contractor when you're usually responsible for buying your own safety gear, but that's ah. not it. <laughs> That's only right. if you're a self-employed contractor. They, yeah. get, they get paid extra to do that anyway. So yeah. Right. Well, let's see how long it takes for a scammer to find this video, hear what Neil's just said, and tell it to one of us. <laughs> <laughs> right. Any other questions for Neil? We're doing well. Can you... Can you oh, no, we've done that one. Can you fish off a rig? Um Um, no. No, I don't think anybody else has got any questions for you. Um, Right, hang on. I have, over here on my other screen, I have a little crib sheet of questions that I wanted to ask. So let's just see um, whether there's anything that we haven't asked. Um, Oh, yes, here's one where I said to him, um, he said, I've never left the rig since my contract. Um, I said, and I said to him, how come you've never left the rig? Have you only been there for two or three weeks? And he said, no, four years. So this was Denise, um, who nobody likes. But anyway, it was Denise. And she said, you must get at least three or four weeks leave every year. And he said, he said it was my decision. Mm, don't think so. Oh, and then he, I'd forgotten this one, um, who's, who said that he gets picked up by a company vehicle every time he's going somewhere. And Serafina said, roll on floor laughing, it would be odd to have a car in the middle of the North Sea. How do you get onto an oil rig? And he said, we use helicopters, which is true. Um, then we've got another one who says, I get my vacation every three years and stay three months with my family. Unless you apply for my vacation, he then added. Um, 
Oh, yes, the leisure facilities. What are the leisure facilities like on an oil platform? Generally, though, they'll have pretty decent gyms. Uh, they'll have pool tables, that sort of thing. A cinema kind of room. Um, and obviously the restaurant facilities. Yeah. So when they tell you they're, they're either working or they're in their cabin, that's not true. Necessarily. No, 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 no. using the leisure facilities or eating, you know, that, that, that's obviously plays a big part in the, you know, the, the food over there. So. Yeah. Um, oh, there's one note I've written to myself here, which is not really something to ask Neil, but I'll read what I've said anyway, which is, I've said, ask them the difference between a rig and a platform. And then I've said, does it sound as if they've written the answer themselves? And if it doesn't, Google a sentence now, what I always do when I Google something the scammers have said, I surround it with quotation marks because that forces Google to look for the entire quote. And usually you'll find it online. Um, so, oh, hang on. Um, do contracts pay millions of dollars? If only. Well, uh, to the companies they can, yes. Uh, if it's... Uh... A contract for new drill pipe, uh, new subsea valves, and pressure control system. Yeah, they can be award awarded for millions of dollars to the successful bidder for the contract. Yes, but then that's not just the one individual. You know that that company will probably have two hundred, three hundred people working on that contract. Um, Perfume addict says, answer Kim's question. What uh, what was Kim's question? Did I miss it? Um, do they have medical care on the rig, like a nurse? Yes, there is. There's a medic on, on the rig, yes. Well, would that be a nurse or a doctor? He's a paramedic, usually. Right, OK. With, with a couple of nursing staff, yes. Yeah. If you're injured on there's the rig... There's always access to... Sorry, oh, oh, there's always access to a helicopter should he require urgent evacuation to a hospital. Yeah. If you're injured on the rig, does the oil company pay for your medical expenses? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and Heidi says, do workers have easy access to their pay? <laughs> yes, they do. Um, <laughs> the, the, the scammers that seem to have difficulty seem to be a most unfortunate bunch. I've never heard of it before. You know, they, they just must be unlucky, I guess. Yeah. Um, D didn't we answer that one, Perfume Addict, about the iTunes cards? Um, I think Neil decided that he hadn't ever run out of internet and, and needed an iTunes card. No, I've never, I've never got to that stage yet. No, no you, you haven't had to contact some random lady online and ask them to send you a, an iTunes card or a Steam card? No, I haven't no. Yet, no. So, So you can upgrade your phone, obviously. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, how are we doing for time? Well, we've nearly had an hour, so I, I try to keep these to an hour so that we don't, uh, you know, take up too much. Um, any any more questions for Neil? Um, do, what, what have I missed? Um, can I scroll back? Uh, yeah, my, my cat seems to have deserted her post tonight. <laughs> Somebody says, uh, oh, do, uh, scroll back up a bit now. Uh, I missed a few. Um, do you enjoy coming home? Yes, generally you do, yes. It gets a bit, gets a bit tiresome. Yeah. Well, why do people work on rigs? I, is it for the pay or the excitement? It's mainly or? for the pay. Mainly for the, the pay, pay, yes. Yeah. It's purely for the pay, I would say, in 99% of cases. Yeah. Uh, or to get away from the wife if you don't get on, I suppose. <laughs> um, oh, yes. Scam beta Sasquatch says, having to rely on Apple gift cards, must not know how to budget. Well. Oh, Alan says, have you ever met anyone that was scammed by an oil rig scammer? Personally, I haven't. Not, not in person, no. No, I haven't. It would be... Oh, 
thank you very much, Betty. That's very kind of you. Thank you. Be Betty's just made a donation. Thank you very much. Because Neil can't see. Um, all right, Neil, what's the name of your cat? That's Zach that's in the background. I have two others, Casey and Lucy, but that's Zach that's running around at the moment. <laughs> She's like, he's like the furry, the extra furry version of my Sophie who's disappeared, the incontinent cat. <laughs> Yes, Sophie. Yes. She and I were sh sharing a chair earlier on. I had to go and change my trousers <laughs> and change the uh, um, blankets. Or the... I have all the chairs in my room uh, covered with um, blankets. Oh, thank you very much again, Betty. That's twice. Thank you. Um, all the chairs in my room covered with tea towels and um, blankets and things. And um, I... Uh, do a lot of washing at the moment. Uh, Susan says, do you receive scam emails? Do I receive them personally? Yes. I, 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 I'll sometimes deliberately look for them, yes. <laughs> I, I enjoy, I enjoy uh, having a go with the Indian scammers, though. You know, the guys who purport to be from the Inland Revenue, that sort of thing. Yeah. Yes, I, I had one today, which I, um, well, yesterday, actually, who phoned me up claiming to be from the car phone warehouse um, and wanting to sell me a cheaper contract. There's a video coming out, so I won't tell you the whole story. Um, yeah. But interestingly, uh, they weren't trying to make me log into online banking. And I was wondering, I wondered out loud in the video, is that because more people are aware that if they try to gain access to your computer and get you to log into our online banking that they're scamming you so what he was trying to do was get my bank account details my uh, my bank card details and get me to send him a photograph of the front and back of the card obviously then he'd have the three digit number on the back um so if that failed um does Neil think that scammers will start up in Bonnie Scotland? Oh, I'm sure there are some already. We just haven't heard of it being a widespread problem. But I mean, they're everywhere else, so why not? Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's just unfortunate that uh, I actually sometimes try very hard to pick out scammers that I think might be somewhere else. And so far, I've failed. Um, does does anybody suffer with cabin fever? I've never really um, experienced anybody with it personally, so no, I can't really say if they do or not. I've never seen it. Uh, That's all I can really say. You, you wouldn't go back again if you did, would you? You'd do your two weeks oh, and then no, not go back again. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, presumably, I it's quite a restricted environment that you're living in it's uh it can be the the cabins can i suppose it could be regarded as being quite claustrophobic yeah especially with the lights out and uh, the little safety strips the illuminated safety strips on the floors they're on all the time they have to be illuminated so that obviously yeah. there's a fire you can get out but um yeah kind of, um, maybe it would affect some people to see that yes but I've never experienced it personally. Yeah. I've never seen anybody turn into a raven lunatic offshore yet. <laughs> and is it very noisy? Can you hear the sea the whole time, even in your cabin? No, no, you can't at all. Um, right. Generally, the, the, the cabins are well insulated against sound. Right. Precisely for that reason. Yeah. If you're, if you're out in the non-insulated um, areas, you can hear the, generally hear the generators all the time humming yeah. all the time, the turbines. Yeah. But uh, on the various machinery, but you get used to that. Yeah. Alan says, Neil, you've been great. It's so interesting. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, and Dennis or Denise, I'm so sorry, I don't know whether you're male or female, says they, they must work a lot of hours a day. Yes, yeah, so you've said they work 12 hours a day, haven't you? 12 hours a day, sometimes up, up to 18 if there's something urgent needs done, yes. Yeah. Gosh, 18 hours is... I can't imagine being able to concentrate or focus for that long. Generally, those that have been working 18-hour shifts, they won't be going back to work within six hours. They'll get their full 12 hours off 
right. a room for that as well. So, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's not as if they're walking around, you know, have a sleep. No, that wouldn't be permitted. Yeah. <laughs> Perfume Addict says, is it a dangerous job? Do you have life insurance for later? <laughs> Yes, I certainly do, yeah. <laughs> and it's no more dangerous than crossing the road, I don't think, to be honest. It's, uh, more people are killed on the road, to put it that way. Yeah. I guess, well, I shouldn't say this, should we? Um, keeping fingers tightly crossed or whatever you believe in, um, you don't have the serious major incidents that you were having 30, 40 years ago, do you? No, the, as I said, since Piper Alpha... Uh, things were really tightened down on. Safety was made a, was properly made a, uh, the main concern. Yeah. And it was adhered to. Yeah. So the, uh, this time round, if there was anything to happen, it would be pure bad luck, I think, because everything possible has been done to ensure that doesn't happen again. Yeah. Um, somebody says, uh, Susan says, do you have to be able to swim? Yes, you, you, you're going to survive. Everybody who goes on the platform will go on a, a survival course. Initially, it's a five-day course where you learn what to do should the helicopter crash. You go upside down in a helicopter trainer and you get out in the towing pool, that sort of thing. There's a fire, and you know, part of the course involves firefighting as well, you know, finding your way out of a smoke and fire filled building. Yeah. You touch a wound, that sort of thing, yeah. Yeah. Oh, thanks everybody, and thanks Denise. It's Denise, not Dennis. I apologise. Uh, <laughs> Neil's been wonderful, says Perfume Addict. Um, Betty says he agrees. She agrees. You're very interesting. So, um, Master's going to watch it later because she's only just woken up, I guess. Uh, yes, it'll be. Um, it'll be available on replay because I just leave everything up on the channel. Uh, so people can watch it later. Um, so if there aren't any more questions for Neil, um, we'll wrap it up. So apologies for all those to all those of you. I always hate interrupting the chat because people get really chatting and it kind of feels like you're sort of cutting them off. Um, which is horrible. Um, but anyway, uh, so thank you very much for coming and telling us life as it really is on a platform uh, as opposed to oh, what the scammers pleasure. think it's like thanks for having me um and i'm hoping that neil might uh, become one of our live chat moderators as well uh, so you might pop see him popping up in <laughs> yes denise says would love to have neil confront a scammer sometime okay. that would be very interesting wouldn't it i wonder i wonder if we can work on that if we can get Neil somehow involved in one of the um, baits of a um, of a rig, or uh, I'll think about that one. I'll give that some thought. Yes, I will think about that one. But anyway, yes. So thank you very much, Neil. Um, actually, don't go away because I'll end the stream first. This this is always like the um, Zoom thing, isn't it? With everybody going goodbye goodbye and somebody going oh where's the end button how do i get rid of you um but over here it's very easy because all i have to do is click on end stream and we'll disappear so i'm going to thank you everyone for joining us and uh see you again in another video why does it not want to let me end it oh there we go end Your stream will stop immediately, yes. There we go.